good afternoon everyone uh, last two classes we have been discussing about uh, what are uh, the concepts behind control systems engineering uh, and how it is useful in analysis of any mechanical system or electrical system or any new product when it is uh, before its launch how uh, a model can be built mathematical model can be built and how the performance of uh, such uh, products can be predicted that's what we saw in the last two classes we will uh, go according, according to our curriculum uh, in our unit number 5 we are going to uh, study uh, what do we mean by systems what is a control system then we'll uh, try to compare what are open loop systems what are closed loop systems and then we'll try to learn uh, what are the techniques of mathematical modeling of mechanical systems uh, and then we'll see some other system representation methods like uh, block diagram uh, representation and the rules related to block diagram algebra as such this is what uh, our unit number 5 contains so let us uh, start with the concepts or uh, the definitions of uh, various terms used in control systems first of all let us see what do we mean by a system in designing a mechatronic system one of the steps involved Uh, is to prepare a model of the system so that predictions as i told you earlier predictions can be made regarding its behavior when parametric changes occur now this we are doing uh, beforehand at the development phase before building our first first prototype view such models involve drawing block diagrams to represent systems now this will be studying in details there are number of representation methods one of the methods is uh, writing a, a mathematical equation of uh, operation this which describes the dynamics of that system in the other graphical methods are there one of the methods is uh, representing various elements involved in that uh, mechatronic system uh, in the form of blocks so it's a sort of a pictorial representation of uh, Uh, various systems uh, what happens is uh, when we have a pictorial representation uh, it gives us a brief idea about uh, the functioning of a system it is somewhat similar uh, to if you go to any of the societies uh, well planned societies let us say uh, what we see is there are let us say 300 blocks are there constructed uh, uh, let us say you have gone to some vishnavi nagar and in vishnavi nagar there are 300 blocks uh, instead of searching each of the blocks separately which block is where what they do is they uh, portray a plan which is a sort of a, a block block representation so it's a site plan so you have a scale the diagram at the entrance of the society itself wherein all the roads are shown in a scaled down manner and then uh, main roads sub roads and then the block number so it's a, a scaled down version of a, a plan diagram so at the entrance itself instead of searching randomly what we can do is we have to go to third road from the third road uh, take left turn and uh, we have block number 250 whatever it is so we, it is easy to uh, sort out somewhat similar Uh, kind of uh, utilities there of a block diagram uh, let us say we have uh, we are visiting uh, a dairy plant let us say dud pandari pune road we have a dud pandari plant and uh, we want to visit let us say uh, the refrigeration plant above the plant has 32 blocks so just to locate that block by referring to that diagram i can identify where is the refrigeration block located i can identify that once i go to refrigeration plant now how that freezing unit works instead of before 
understanding the verbal description of uh, uh, the chilling plant if a diagram is provided where the milk enters how it is filtered okay how it is heated how the pasteurization is done and how uh, the chilling is done and where the storage is happening if i just uh, depict it in the form of a block just i put a square block and put chiller i uh, name it as a chiller i i uh, put a block and name it as a plate heat exchanger where pasteurization is taking place so i can get a feel i can get an idea overall picture let us say a bird's eye view of uh, that system so similar is the case in case of uh, our control system block diagram representation as well before understanding uh, a complex physical process uh, i have a press shock uh, uh, how that uh, hydraulic circuit in the press shock works before verbally listening to it and understanding it is always better to look at the line diagram or the block diagram of the functioning of that power press so that the things uh, are conceptualized in your mind so to say similar such models have a, uh, involved drawing block diagrams to represent the system so this is one way of pictorial representation of the control system though mathematical details are not involved in it but later on once you know the equation of operation of each of the blocks <clears throat> each of the elements each of the components each of the subsystems then i can insert those uh, transfer functions inside the block diagram so that i can analyze that block diagram even so this is one way of representation a system can be thought of as a box or a block diagram which has an input and an output and where we are concerned not with what goes on inside the box but with only the relationship between the output and the input is that it so our objective is very clear what is the input to the, that system and what is the output from the system and what that uh, element or component or subsystem is exactly doing so the system is a, a representation method so suppose i have a spring uh, what i do i just uh, apply some force and the spring stretches okay so if i want to depict that functioning in the form of a block diagram let us see here what i do is i just write spring inside the box input is the applied force and what is the output output is extension extension of that spring so a system is a diagrammatic representation a system has some input and it gives out some output okay similar motor input is i provide some electrical power and what i get as the output is rotation or rpm and torque as the output uh, uh, we have a thermometer as a measurement system input is uh, the temperature suppose it is a liquid in glass type of a thermometer that bulb glass bulb is subject which is mercury in glass tube type of a thermometer input is that mercury is subjected to temperature because of that it expands and it rises in the capillary that we have above that thermometer and output is number on the scale actually it is the expansion of the mercury which moves in the capillary and if uh, that capillary is calibrated in terms of uh, degree celsius or degree fahrenheit accordingly it will if it is properly calibrated it will tell me the exact temperature value so input is the temperature and output is the number that is shown on the scale so this is what is a representation of a system now what is a control system the meaning of the word control is uh, to regulate something to monitor something uh, uh, to moderate something uh, isn't it so there are many meanings uh, to uh, the word control now the control system uh, can control the temperature can regulate the flow can attenuate the voltage signal uh, right so there are number of parameters it can uh, uh, regulate or control or monitor a control system can be thought of as a system which can be used first to control some variable to some particular value for example a central heating system where the temperature is controlled to a particular value so the objective is to regulate the temperature to control the temperature now this 
room heating system is most popular in western countries where the temperature in certain regions are sub zero temperatures so the snow falls are there so people stay inside and they have to heat up that room so room heating system is a common place where <laughs> in asian or, or subcontinental houses <laughs> we more or less require air conditioning uh, cooling uh, because the outside temperature is higher so we need to have comfort comfortable stay so we have a room air conditioning system so there this control system regulates or controls the temperature within a room uh, the objective can be to control the sequence of events for example a washing machine where when the dials are set to say there is a light wash and the machine is then controlled to a particular washing cycle sequence of events appropriate to that type of clothing okay so in a washing machine uh, normally we use in today's washing machines they use microcontrollers the objective is once uh, once again the similar what it does uh, it does not precisely control the quality of wash as such but what it does is uh, it controls the sequence of operations what should happen if you typically observe a washing machine working uh, as as it said here uh, you have number of buttons available light wash heavy wash the uh, 30 minute wash cycle 40 minutes wash cycle one hour wash cycle accordingly i set uh, i press that button and set the controller for that value so once that button is set and if you start the execution of the control cycle what exactly happens is we know the washing process what what happens you put uh, the clothes inside the drum and then first stage uh, the water hot water or cold water it is flowing inside let us list out uh, the operations let us say the first stage entering of water inside the drum so wetting of clothes let us say uh, maybe hot water or cold water uh, and let us say that the temperature heating of that uh, water is already been done i have a 60 degree celsius hot water that is pouring inside the drum now next is uh, allowance of some detergent okay maybe 50 grams of detergent is to be mixed that is step 2 so that valve is opened and uh, the detergent is allowed to enter inside the drum so i have water plus mm, uh, detergent okay warm water plus detergent to required concentration now the next stage is uh, first of all mixing of that mixture and wetting of the clothes so next stage is next step is in the sequence of operations is maybe rotating the drum uh, so that there is proper mixing of this detergent and uh, hot water warm water and wetting of clothes maybe clockwise anti clockwise uh, rotation of the drum that is stage 3 uh, once that proper mixing is done then uh, maybe depending on heavy cycle light cycle now that wash wash action has to happen so what is stage 4 uh, we uh, Uh, it will do sort of a, a stirring action clockwise uh, maybe one rotation clock anti clockwise one more rotation maybe nowadays they are putting some balls plastic balls inside that so that you have that impacting action um, uh, taking place inside the drum and uh, the clothes are washed accordingly so fourth step is uh, execution of clockwise and anti clockwise twisting actions so that can be done vigorously that can be done uh, lightly depending on the type of wash that i want okay thereafter uh, once this is repeated maybe four or five times so that is stage number 5 the repetition of uh, clockwise and anti clockwise twisting and thereafter once uh, that maybe 15 minutes time for 15 minutes you have to do that uh, uh, sort of a stirring action and uh, step number 6 could be okay the uh, clothes are washed let us say then uh, draining out of uh, before draining let us say uh, it is the rinsing of the clothes okay so uh, next stage uh, step number 6 could be allowing more water inside the drum uh, so that the dilution of detergent and uh, cleaning of clothes would be done to some extent so allowance of more water and thereafter Uh, while rinsing up you dilute the detergent content within the clothes what we do is uh, we start spinning the drum 
maybe so st step number seven could be spinning up drum slowly. So when spinning up drum, uh, spinning up close takes place, all the, the those drums are perforated. So once the spinning starts, maybe at 400 RPM, 200 RPM, whatever it is, the set value, the water because of centrifugal action will go out, come out of the close and it will be connected, collected within the storage drum. So this is what this water is, uh, a mixture of detergent and dirt and uh, water, everything. So in first stage of rinsing, um, some of uh, the soap detergent is removed. Then maybe step number eight could be a heavy rinsing. You uh, pour some more water, add some more water and just do spinning once again. So the clothes are clean now. Uh, step number nine could be uh, now drying. Then once again spinning heavily and before that maybe whatever water collected should be drained off. That could be step number 11. So the draining of uh, dirty water, that is step number 11. By adding one more, few more, uh, maybe a little more of water, fresh water for uh, rinsing once again, doing it once again, step number 12. And then drying of clothes, then spinning the drum at maybe say 400 RPM, 600 RPM. So whatever is the water content that will be removed from the clothes. And then this completes the cycle. And, uh, maybe giving a bib that wash cycle is complete and then so that you can open the door. Now this is what is the sequence of operation let us say. Now what control system can do or microcontroller can do based on my sequential requirements accordingly the control signals will be given to appropriate actuating elements. Maybe opening a valve, closing a valve, uh, starting of motor, stopping of motor, heating of water, uh, stopping the heating of water opening of drain valve, closing of drain valve. So whatever are the events involved in a sequential fashion, those should, uh, be, those should be executed. So the second application of control system is controlling the sequence of events. Okay, right. So uh, in a feedback control system, now this is a new word, feedback control system. Up till now we are talking about a control system. Now feedback, as the name indicates, what I'm doing, I'm observing whether my desired output is attained or not. I take a feedback. Like in a class, I ask you a question. Okay, I have conveyed you the concept. Have you understood it? Yes, no. If yes, I go to the next point. If no, I repeat the concept. So this is sort of feedback that I'm taking. In control systems also, uh, what is done is, suppose I want to maintain temperature of a furnace. I want to attain a temperature of 1000 degree inside a heat treatment furnace. I set uh, the knobs for those 1000 degrees Celsius and I keep on taking the feedback. What is the present temperature? 600, 700, 800, accordingly the corrective action is taken. So I use the sensor transducer to sense the temperature and that signal is fed back and that is compared uh, with the set value and accordingly, whatever is the error in the temperature value, the corrective action is given to the actuator. In case of a heater, electrical heater, the input voltage is varied so that Further reading is done, till what point the error becomes zero. So this feedback is constantly taken from the system so that the desired uh, output parameter is obtained. So it's a feedback control system. In a feedback control system, the actual output signal is fed back and compared with the set value and a corrective control action is taken so that the desired output is obtained. Example, human body temperature control. Now this is a wonderful autonomous uh, control system that nature has given, God has given. Uh, it has got a temperature control system. <laughs> it has got uh, a dirt control system. It has got all the parameters. Flow control systems are there. The humidity control systems are there. Okay, vision control systems are there. Sound control systems are there. Touch tactile control systems are there. So, and these are the visible outside uh, the units we are talking about within our system. Digestive system has its own control system. When the food is taken inside, uh, how that peristaltic uh, movement can help uh, the food to reach the stomach. And there, once the, there is food inside the stomach, how uh, those enzymes and those uh, digestive juices are secreted only after that. And then the digestion takes place and then absorption starts and then uh, excretion takes place. So digestive control system, 
then various hormonal secretions those take place automatically even uh, emotional response if you are having fear if you have got anxiety uh, the certain secretions would automatically start so it's a wonderful human body is a wonderful example of a uh, natural control system or body gifted control system okay the body temperature as we all know uh, in hot sunny day what happens is the body temperature is needed to be maintained at the preset value so what happens is uh, the brain senses or or rather whatever on the skin we might have sensors and that temperature is sensed and that signal is given to the brain so what brain does is brain actuates the sweat glands on the skin wherever the skin uh, sweat glands are there and those sweat glands are actuated and uh, the fluid is liberated that sweat is liberated coming out of the skin pores and it it, it is on the surface of the skin what happens is uh, the body and the air flows over that sweat and you have that cooling effect the heat transfer is taking place convective heat transfer is taking place on the surface of your skin and the body temperature is <laughs> maintained to be that well this is a wonderful example of a human body temperature control uh, wonderful feedback control system now room temperature control as i said we discussed earlier in western countries we use room temperature control systems and uh, the fuel is burnt and then whatever is the requirement uh, the outside temperature is let us say sub zero temperature maybe minus 10 degrees as the snow is so fall is taking place and i want to maintain the room temperature simple temperature to let us say 25 degrees celsius so maybe i am sitting inside a human element acts as a feedback element and the system proper and then we will start burning uh, more wood or maybe actuate some electrical heater so that <laughs> those heaters or the furnaces will start giving out heat and the room temperature is maintained at your desired value so so your human element there is acting as a feedback element senses the temperature and feels it and then takes uh, manually certain actions so that the room heats or there can be uh, automatic control systems also there can be sensors which sense the room temperature and uh, depending on the preset value Maybe 25 degrees is the preset degree Celsius. The preset value, present temperature is maybe minus 10. The error signal is of 35 degrees accordingly. Uh, the control signal is generated and the uh, actuating signal is uh, developed so that the heater will start up and it will keep on heating the room till the desired temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So these are the examples of feedback control system. Uh, we'll discuss these in uh, details now. Uh, feedback control human body temperature how is the block diagram representation just observe here required temperature the body temperature control system the maintained body temperature feedback of data about actual temperature maybe skin whatever sensors are there on the human body the second example is room temperature with central heating this is the required temperature and this is actual temperature feedback of data about actual temperature and the corrective action is taken so that the furnace is actuated and the room temperature is then we have okay the third example picking up a pencil or any activity i am doing i am writing on a board so human being is also one of the feedback elements uh, where is the board located where is the chalk located where is the dust located uh, so accordingly i take the action and uh, writing on the board takes place or searching of a pen searching of canteen in our gpid campus uh, first of all randomly we search once we know once we calibrate our system Who has per my campus uh, layout? I, I automatically go by the road to the canteen area. So these are the examples of uh, feedback controls. There are a number of examples uh, in day-to-day -day life. You, as a mechanical engineer, the CNC control systems. We have uh, feed control systems, uh, spindle speed control systems. We have uh, the surface finish control systems. We have Uh, the cutting force control systems we have the cutting temperature lubrication control systems so all are examples of my feedback controls as i said uh, we discussed about engine control systems where the engine power output and rpm is maintained automatically by using uh, engine feedback control system so these are the few examples of uh, feedback control systems uh, i think we should stop for today